Today's video is made possible by our friends at Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly box service that offers really unique, interesting products from many small companies located right here in the U.S. Welcome back, friends, to shop into part five of our putting together a 100% USA made tool mechanics kit. Today, we're going to be adding four tools to the kit. We're going to be adding our hammer, our ball peen, our drift punch, uh, our USA made pliers, and our needle nose. Let's start with the pliers and see which USA manufacturer makes which, well, I guess the ones that we're going to pick for the kit. So what we're trying to go for here is we're looking for snap-on quality without the snap-on price, uh, and they have to be 100% made in the U.S. So it does not give us a lot of options. A couple brands not represented here, Mac uh, and SK, but they were at the same price with the snap-on, and it just wasn't really, I mean, if we're going to pay the same price, we're going to get snap-on, right? So this is what we have. We've got the channel lock. Uh, that came in at about $15. I got the Williams, which was right around $18. The Proto, uh, which is, has been purchased by Stanley, it's got the Proto and the Stanley name on it. Well, now that it's got the Stanley name on it, I guess we can assume it's going to go to, to heck in a handbasket. And then my stand, and then my snap on my large and small pliers. Now, a lot of guys, th these I think with a lot of people have kind of fallen out of favor or they're not in vogue anymore now that we have the excellent Knipex and to, to be honest there's the, the Knipex are really really superior but they're made in Germany and one thing with the Knipex that I they're superior in about every way build material just design and all that but they're not suited for just they're not suitable well I don't know I'm not grabbing I, I'm not carrying them in the top of my toolbox what does that mean? Well, the top of my tool tray are the only the things that I use on a daily basis that are essential. You know, all of the cream that's risen to the top. And I don't keep these in there because I think it's because of the angle. You just need the, a pair of pliers, a good pair of simple pliers for just grabbing and pinching and pulling and, and stripping bolts and all, all those things. And the sy symmetry of the just the classic slip joint style. And the reason why it's called slip joint is because of this right here gives you two options. So it, it opens up, it changes the fulcrum so you can get up on something small or up on something big. Just makes them more versatile. And that's a really important feature to have. But what I find with these guys is having them at that right angle, I don't always want to do that. And I don't, you know, they don't, they don't work as well the other way. They work really good one way, but not just grab and go. And so I find that they're in all my kits uh, and if I don't know what I'm going to do, I'll definitely grab these because of their versatility. But the, they're, not hand, they're not as handy for me as, as just for the day-to-day -day tasks as these. So I'm going to go with these. This is what my granddad always had. I mean, that's what, in the top of his tool tray, I remember a ball peen hammer and it's a pair of pliers. So the big ones, six and a half inch and maybe the five inch right there. So the six inch is really the sweet spot. So this is kind of the gold standard. Little known fact, a lot of people don't realize this, but pliers have cutters in them, slip joints. Also, on this back side right there, that's actually a, a cutting edge. And it's not super precise, but it'll cut wire, no problems. Even the cheap ones should be able to do that, like the, the channel locks here. Definitely, no problem. But, and then you have the other thing to consider with pliers is, do you, you see how they're, they're flat on the end there? Uh, these guys here where the protos have a, a, a round area right there. It's concave, you know, for grabbing round things and stuff. Well, if that's all you're doing, if you're a plumber, for example, you know, that might be nice. You can see because that reaches in there and you can really, especially with the Kanipex, you can really grab onto stuff tight, especially small fittings and such. And that's fine for that, but it's not, hand, it's not really great for for general service and I don't like it um, because I'm, I'm usually grabbing something, I'm grabbing a piece of wire or a screw or a bolt and I want that flat surface area, I want that uniformity. It just seems to be handier in all locations. So that really all of these fit except for the protos. Now one of the things I do like about these protos and these came in, these were tw $20, is looking at them up close the quality is it's it's okay it's uh, it's on par with these but it's not great it's, it's got it's nowhere near compared as nice as the snap on what you really see is the machining 
don't know if you can see that there at the end right here. It doesn't come together. It's very crude. The teeth are some of them are kind of bent over and, and damaged inside. It just looks like no one really cared. Uh, it just does, has the, the feel and looks of a cheap tool. I do like the straight handles. I think that that's a better design. It gives its nice leverage on there. And what's really kind of cool and innovative is that this has a flush mounted um, nut. And that may not seem like a big deal, but if you look at the non-adjustable type, like the Williams and the, and the channel locks, you'll see that it's got a round rivet there, or round chamfered edges on there. That's because that is always, it, that gets in your way. And when you work on cars and work on stuff a lot, you'll come in situations where you need these to sit flat and they won't because they've got an adjustment nut on there. So what they've done here is kind of innovative by recessing that down in there and so you, you just have a smoother pair of pliers. But the round and the jaws, the build quality, the finish is not super nice, and then the cheap vinyl uh, hand grips, I don't like that stuff. It gets really slippery and it, 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 you won't have it long before it'll start spinning and it'll slip off and you'll just probably take it off and throw it away. Versus this super skooka material that Snap-on uses and Nipex as well, as well uh, which wears like iron. I don't know what it is, but it's got a texture to it. It's a little bit softer. It's not slippery when your hands are, are, are really greasy and oily. Uh, it's a far better material and it doesn't seem to, to slip or come off. I mean, I've had these, these for years and it's still, still going. And that's what the Williams has got going for it. It's got that same exact same material that the Snap-on has. So there is that. The other downside with these two is the adjust, you can't adjust them. You've just got to, this is just a, a fixed rivet. Now you can, if these get really super sloppy and loose over the time, you can simply take this on, put it on an anvil on that rivet and, and carefully and strike that. Strike that with a good hammer and that will tighten that up a little bit. It's, it's not really a big problem. Where the snap-ons and the protos, of course, you know, when these get loose, you can adjust them. But you're looking at $50, $60 pliers versus $15, $18 pliers. Um, so that, that's the big difference. And I do, it just doesn't really matter. They're, they're just, it's just something you need in your box that you'll just grab all the time. And those six inch pliers are really the way to go. So which one am I gonna pick? If it weren't for the silly, goofy double round um, deal on there, I would probably take these, although they just don't give me the fizz because they, the quality's not there. One thing that bugs me, look at this. So look, focus, if you focus on that, this rivet right here, right here, right? Watch it, see how much movement there is? When you, when you come tight, that, that thing's slopping around in there. It's not, it's, it's just shabby. It's shabby, so we're, we're going to get rid of that. So when it comes to, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go with the Williams. I don't like the channel locks primarily because I don't like that vinyl. I don't like that slippery vinyl, and they're, I don't know. I mean, they're all, we're talking, we're really splitting hairs right down. What, what, what it comes down to with these is that the Williams are just a little bit more robust. Bigger handles, it's going to be less pressure points on your hand when you're squeezing. And these just feel too dainty and too small. I'm just not a fan of the channel locks. So I'm going to go with the Williams. For what did we come in there? 18 bucks, Mama Kitty, you're on my price sheet here. Where are we at? Where are we at? Our Williams came in for our pliers at $16. $16, and we really get a very similar plier to the Snap-on. Not <laughs> as quite as refined, uh, but we get the nice uh, the cushion grip handle. Uh, we probably have a very similar steel. Um, yeah, I just don't, I can't, I can't see the difference having that adjustment nut on there. These are going to work just fine, and the price is right. So we're going to go with these right there. So this will add to our current price, uh, and I'll figure the sums up. So these came in at $16. A cool thing is 90% of the items that come in bespoke boxes come from small businesses, which many of them are located right here in the U.S. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on a quiz you take when you sign up. Before it's shipped, you also get a preview of what comes inside, so you can decide whether you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or put a hold on it and skip the month entirely. The first box I'll open is the Carve. I do look forward to this. So this is a beginner's wood carving kit, 
And we've got, that's kind of a nice, so this is the project. We've got a USA knife made, this is a USA made knife from Bear and Sons Cutlery. And what it does, it's got a bone handle and it gives you all the tools, the basic tools for beginning carving as well as templates and some ideas. So that's kind of a cool project. That would be a cool project to do um, with a, that'd be quite a treasure to be able to carve this if you do that with your kids. The second box to open is the adventure. Oh, that's positive. <laughs> Always like knives. Uh, we've got a sharpener here from our friends at WorkSharp. You know, we've worked with them before. That's a good company. They make some nice products. Their, their knife sharpeners are among my favorites. Right there, and this is a pocket version. I don't have this one. Well, it's got the ceramic rods on it. These are really nice, and diamond. We do have a knife, a big knife. This is a company from, guy's name is Adam Glick. He's kind of a, he's a van guy, like myself, uh, who's a chef that does some stuff with online cooking. He's come up with a folding chef's knife. <laughs> German steel, they said on there, but that's pretty cool. That, that's really unique. It's interesting, in our van, we have a, a Victorinox chef knife, but it doesn't have a sheath, and you can't fold it. I'm always worried about it. It's all, it was getting dull, so that's kind of cool. That would be perfect for the camper. That's pretty nice. That's going to be hard to top that one. That, that one's definitely my favorite. All right, the third box we are going to be opening is Stockpile. These are fun because you get to see things from companies you didn't even know existed. Like, this is really cool. Look at that. That's a, like an a, aluminum Really nice uh, canister survival kit with a built-in flashlight. And this is a flashlight module with a flush mounted button. Now you got it says right there, it's etched in, press and hold to turn it on. That way it doesn't inadvertently turn on if you're throwing it in the backpack or a pocket, which always happens with those EDC knives. Four modes, low, red, so you don't blow out your night vision, and a strobe. In here, it's kind of very similar to like a, an old mag light, but really nice O-ringed waterproof, you have storage containers here. So you've got bamboo cloth, so there's tinder there for starting a fire, and then medical tape, as well as marking tape. That might even be reflective. And then an empty canister here for fire tinder. You put small matches in there, whatever it is that you start a fire with. So you have your grab and go kit. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter Wrangler Star 20 on checkout. Thanks for watching and back to the video. Now, you also, the guy needs a good need set of needle nose pliers. I did get a set of the Williams in, um, as well as the uh, Kleins. They're both about the same price, but for the $28, the eight inch Kleins, uh, these are the lineman version, so they have a little hole there in your cutter for stripping number 12 wire, uh, which you may or may not use. And you don't necessarily need the insulated covers, but these were at Home Depot, and they were about $28, and they're Klein, and they're USA made. And I like them, and I think that they made up really nicely with our, our side cutters. So that's basically our three tools. Those are the main tools that you're gonna be using in the top of your box. Less so with these, these are kind of specialty. I rarely use them unless I drop something in a hard to get area. But these two here are for sure our go-to. All right, so that's one tool. <laughs> Let's talk about hammers. Well, Williams really came in with a nice hammer here. There is nothing more, be more better, more universal, or handier than a ball-peen hammer. Uh, Granddad had uh, 16s. He always had 16-ounce and 32-ounce, and then some 48s. And either whether you go with the 16 or the 30, 24, I think if I was only going to have one, I'd go with the 24. And this is a heck of a nice hammer. I went on the website uh, for Snap-on, and this exact hammer from Snap-on on the site or with the Blue Point label is, is $56 and the Williams came out to $44. Uh, so it's a little bit less for the exact same hammer. I looked at them pretty close. I, I think it's ideal. Nice USA made hammer, 24 ounces. It's got some weight in it. You can pound pins on a tractor. This, this will last you the rest of your life. Absolutely fabulous. American Hickory, if I didn't say, nicely hung right there. You can see double wedged. Uh, they did a good job on it, very well fitted. That's a hammer that will last you forever. You may put a handle on it someday, but not very likely. The snap-on version, the plastic ones, which are really, uh, really pretty and sexy, and they've got that shot fill on there and the shot filled and the soft grip and as nice as they are. Uh, for I have, these last me about five, five, six years before they need replacing. 
and they are under warranty, but you'll overstrike and you'll break the handles, they'll start to crack, and they just get beat up. And to be honest with you, if I was starting over again, I prefer wood-handled hammers. Uh, the shot filled is not enough of a sale. Plus, this hammer, this is a $100 hammer versus $44. Now, granted, this is a 16, this is a 24, but you can just get an idea. Either one, if you plan on having a bigger hammer or a four-pound maul or something, maybe go with the 16. But I think for general purpose, if I was just going to have one to my kit, I'm going to recommend the 24. And this is a very nice but nice put-together hammer. Unfortunately, they cover it in lacquer. We'll have to finish fix that all off there, but uh, or scrape that off there. But that's going to be my choice for the hammer. Now, uh, one of the other things that's in the top of my box that's super, super handy uh, is a, a tapered punch or tapered drift. This is the one, the old New Holland. Is that New Holland? No, Holland. Yeah, New Britain. New Britain I got from my granddad. This was one that he cared, always had around. You can get these with the center punch, a point on them. I find that a regular is better. I like that eight. I like the regular, the flat on there rather than the punch because you can get along edges of something when you're punching out bearings. You can get on races. And just If you're going to have a center punch, have a center punch dedicated. But for the tapered drift, uh, this is about ideal. I like that eighth inch with a half inch stock. It makes a nice size. And this is about a 10 inch punch overall. And that's perfect. Mine is a seven. Uh, but I'll be replacing that with this one. I like this one better. This is a full eight, and this is a Williams, and this came in at $18, and this is obviously snap-on quality. It looks exactly the same to me as the snap-on wrenches. So there we go. So just a quick recap here. Uh, we're going to go with our needle nose, our Klein. Uh, we'll go with our Williams taper punch, our Williams 24-inch ball peen, our Williams slip, slip joints, and that are the four, those are the four tools that we're adding today. It looks like we left off last time with our kit and the price was at $579. So we'll add these up. So for our Williams six inch slip joint pliers, we're gonna add uh, $16 there uh, versus the Snap-on, which were $55. And our total price for this kit in Snap-on was at currently $2,159. Then we're gonna add our Klein needle nose and that came in at $28 for those, USA made, uh, versus the Snap-on, which were $52. We're gonna add our excellent Williams ball peen hammer, 24 ounce hickory handle, that came in at $44 versus the Snap-on, which was $56 for the Blue Point. If we go with the Snap, we'll go with the Snap-on brand, uh, then we're at $100, so we'll put that in there for a plastic, the plastic handled one. And to finish off for the tapered drift, for the Williams, which is identical as far as I can tell to the Snap-on, $18. Snap-on equivalent, $56. And these are our totals. I've got to say, we've got a very high quality, respectable set of hand tools here. Uh, next time we're going to cover uh, Allens and Torx. I found uh, what I think is exactly the same as the Snap-on ones, um, but uh, in the same containers even, that are excellent wrenches for a fraction of the price. I'm going to add two things on here, and I'll put links to this. Unfortunately, I'm not able to find a USA version of these. This is just a simple, small O-ring pick. Now, if you're working on transmissions and things where a piece of metal could fall down inside, don't cheap out on these things. If you break the tip of this, they're notorious for breaking off if you pry too hard on it. And the cheaper ones, they're brittle and they'll snap off and fall down into your transmission and then you're really in trouble. So you don't save anything. I found Williams has a set of four that are made in Korea. It's their lower end brand. But what I've seen in tools made in Korea are cut way above a lot of the Chinese stuff. Um, if this is something that's important to you, you might just splurge the 18 bucks and buy a Snap-on. Um, personal choice right there. This and the, the cotter pin tool here is super handy. This is handy for getting a radiator hoses loose when they get, you know, kind of tied on, hooked or bonded onto the heater core. It's really, really great for some of those electrical plugs like um, the Deutsch plugs where it's hard to get in there and, and you can pry and probe and pick and a million different things. This is, this needs to be in the top of your box. These two are, are two of my most used, so I'll see if I can find a USA version on that, but you might want to just splurge and get the snap on for the, that very reason. You're not talking about a ton of money and they will, um, you know you what you're going to get. I wish those protos would have been a little bit 
better built because that that smooth bolt is a it's a nice design with those square handles I, I do like it I could almost change my mind here yeah. that's what we have you have these great American tool companies that you know were just the byword for quality you know, Milwaukee Porter cable I mean that was the gold standard back in the day and you've got big evil corporations buying those names up and just basically just harvesting harvesting the quality that was built up over a hundred years with uh, lower quality cheap stuff which is the world we live in but let's not end on a negative note well allow me to brag on my son for a moment uh, Jack or maybe or maybe you don't know we were uh, three days up in Richland Washington for um, he's into debate it was a debate com com competition it was basically a, like a state type of competition um, and he competes in multiple different what we call disciplines there's a debate where you debate with a partner there's debate where um, you just get 20 minutes they tell you a subject they give you 20 minutes to look at it and you have to make it prepare and you have to debate for and against because you have, just you have to have a sharp and fast mind right I wouldn't I would don't know that I would do well in that that type of a situation but he, uh, he meddled, um, and this was his first competition, and um, placed high enough uh, that he will be going on to regionals, which is multi-state. I think three states, um, all the kids in three states will be competing, and if he goes through that, he will go to nationals. So this is his first time. Um, I couldn't be more proud of him. He's, um, he's really gifted when it comes to that. And it was a gr great to be part of that. So I was, um, Mrs. W was judging. She's better qualified for that than I was and got to see more of Jack than I, was, than I did. Uh, I was on Sweet Loaf duty, but um, I did get to see him speak and uh, we're super proud of him. So I appreciate all your prayers. I know it made a big difference. And he was, was just on cloud nine and got to come home with a medal. And we were very proud of him, very proud of him indeed. You just never know what your kids are going to get into. <laughs> I thought he would follow in my footsteps, but he's definitely going down a different route. I can see him getting a law degree and uh, going on and uh, doing, uh, doing great things. That's all we can hope for, right? That our kids do better than, we'd, than we've done. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.